Hi, my name is Rami Shaman Raji Shaker, and this is my science fair project, explaining resonance with the Tesla coil. So to start off, I disassembled my Tesla coil to change the number of turns in the primary coil and to add different top loads to it. The main thing of that is to change the resonant frequency of my Tesla coil. And you can see the formula for resonance frequency right here. And as you can see, L times C. So inductance and capacitance have a role in the resonant frequency. So, so to do that, I, I change the primary inductor and secondary capacitor, which you can see here. The secondary inductor and primary capacitor will stay the same. And to, do, and to change the primary inductor and primary capacitor, I mean secondary capacitor, I had to use these different turns of coil of these wires. Like this one's five turns, this one's one turn. The one I have here on my Tesla coil is two turns. And, and, as, and to make the top loads, I used different sized plastic containers and then I, I cover them with aluminum foil. This one's a small washer covered with aluminum foil. It provides very little capacitance to the environment. And this is a small bottle covered with aluminum foil. It provides a medium amount of capacitance to the environment. And this is a small plastic golf ball covered in aluminum foil, which provides a lot of capacitance to the environment. So all of this plays a role in how big of the arc length we can get from our Tesla coil because to make a nice long arc with a Tesla coil, you need to make both, si both sides resonant frequency the exact same. Otherwise, you'll get smaller and smaller arcs, as you can see here for my data. So for my data, we can see that one turn and no top load did the overall best and was probably the closest to the res resonant frequency. And as you can go down the graph, you can see lower and lower numbers as I increase the capacitance or increase the inductance. So here I have my tensile coil, which has been disassembled. And I'm going to use the no, the no capacitor and two turn coil and running it here, and then measuring the arc length with a ruler. You can see the arc length is at most about 1.1 centimeters. So that's where I got my 1.1 centimeters for two turns and no, no top load. And here's the measuring more. And so here's how it works. So. The primary capacitor and secondary, you know, primary capacitor and second and primary inductor, they they're both coupled together by two wires, and this causes the capacitor, whatever charge high voltage charge it has is, it starts dumping that into the inductor, but the inductor can't can't have a lot of current pushed through it too quickly, so the current in the inductor goes up in a sine wave goes up like a sine wave and the voltage in the capacitor also drops like a sine wave as you can see here so here's here's the voltage of the sec here's the voltage at the secondary output and as you can see it's 4.4 megahertz and ideally the primary um, resonant frequency would also be 4.4 megahertz to create the best results and as you can see it's a high voltage it goes up and down in a sine wave pattern in fact, if I, was, if I were to take the current, it would be something like this. So it would be very, it would be slightly shifted from the, it would be slightly shifted from the voltage because while the capacitor's voltage is dropping, the inductor's current is rising. And then after that, the inductor will have reached saturation and start dumping its magnetic energy back into the capacitor which charges it up again and the, and the current goes down up down up down so you get a bunch of side waves and if you put energy if you put energy from the primary coil and it's resonating at a certain frequency and it and the energy goes into the secondary coil at that same frequency what will happen is the primary coil just resonating like this 
the second equator will start off slow, but that will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that will cause a hot a, a spark to form in midair, and then that spark, and then it will create many more sparks as the arc gap arcs more. So that's how the Tesla coil works. But how does resonant frequency help us other than Tesla coils? Well, resonance in resonance have is very useful in most devices that need a precise timing signal, such as watches or computers. And many devices get that from using a quartz crystal. A quartz crystal is like a tiny tuning fork. And if you like, and it vibrates at a certain frequency. And when it vibrates, it creates electricity across itself. And if you put that electricity into an amplifier and get it back into the quartz crystal, the quartz crystal actually bends because of the electricity and you can just keep it vibrating by um, powering it through a, and powering the electricity from it through an amplifier, feeding it back and then it'll just keep vibrating. And then that will create a stable, stable frequency for a computer or watch or whatever we need a stable frequency for. But resonance can also be bad for us because it can, it can be annoying because especially if you don't want things to shake, it's really good at getting things sh sh shaken up. And if you just provide energy at just the right pace, you can get things shaken up a lot. So and that's a very big problem in bridges and buildings because if the wind or walking on the bridge, if it's at the right frequency, if it's at the right frequency, then the, the building may sway, building or bridge may sway a little at first, but then soon it'll get out of hand, it'll either like collapse or shake real bad, which is very dangerous and not, not good if you're trying to make a bridge that lasts for a very long time. It's also dangerous in electronics because there's parasitic, um, there's parasitic capacitances and inductances, which the parasitic capacitors are the actually the secondary capacitor is a parasitic capacitance so that that parasitic capacitance and inductance can cause ringing in the in a brain wave which which can destroy the signal and some computers might in like in like think the square wave means something else if like because of the ringing and that may cause problems with the computer or anything you're trying, trying to power which may cause glitches and be a problem so, you know, resonance is a very useful thing that helps us, that helps us a lot in the real world, and, but it can also be bad in certain applications.